Thank yeah. you. First, I want to thank everyone for welcoming me here. Um, this is a great opportunity. I've been working with Burish and he's been a great help um, to get me to this place. So about seven weeks, I've been working with SCORE and SCORE has been phenomenal, not only motivating me, but getting me networking connections. So I want to sort of do a shout out to Burish. Um, she wow, this is out of many ideas that actually started in about 2014 and finally came into fruition over quarantine. Um, it's sort of funny how we all go through things, but being shut down, not been thinking. So She Wild is a sheep powered adventure company and it is launching in the Lehigh Valley. Um, a little bit about us, we are at a startup phase. So I am still at a very elementary part of this, but that's okay, because we all start there. My demographics is actually all females and all abilities. My background is in special education, so I'm hoping to launch not only programming that helps, um, I guess, a diverse group of students that um, can participate. Um, services and products, we're looking at education experiences and community. So we have a few different tiers on how She Wild is going to launch. And we're looking at doing adventures in the area, but also franchising and retreats. I was just contacted by a private island interested in hosting a She Wild weekend retreat. So that is very exciting. So a little bit about it. This was founded in March 2021 when I left teaching. Um, and technically found myself unemployed. I am really driven to engage and educate others in the wilderness, especially females. So I was diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and PTSD in 2014. I have struggled with mental health issues um, after a sexual harassment workplace um, situation. And then the idea came in quarantine when I found that hiking became a healer not only in 2014, but also in 2020 when we went into quarantine. And again, I established She Wild as an LLC in March. Closer to the mic? Okay. Um, Charlotte Strayed actually sort of gave me the idea. She is female, wild is part of her novel. And Charlotte Day says, I knew if I only allowed fear to overtake me, my journey was doomed. Fear to the extent is born from a story we tell ourselves. So I choose to tell myself a new story. Um, one that women are told, I decided I was safe, I was strong, and I was brave, and nothing could vanish me. Currently, I am going through a separation, and this part of my life is being very brave. So our philosophy is to educate, engage, experience, and empower women. And this comes through, um, like I said, uh, mental health and being the board member of NAMI of the Lehigh Valley. I sit in mental health regularly. Um, so let's just watch a quick video, if you can click on it, that is through YouTube about nature fix. Walk into a forest and within five minutes, your body and brain start to change. Your heart rate slows. Your facial muscles start to relax. Your hardworking frontal lobes begin to quiet down. And this will boost your productivity and creativity later in the day. I'm Florence Williams, and I've spent the last couple of years writing a book about how being in nature actually makes us more human. Here are some of the things I've learned from the new science looking at nature and our health. The smell of pine trees strengthens your immune system. When you hear bird song or look at fractal patterns in nature, your brain puts out more alpha waves, making you feel both calm and alert. If you spend an hour and a half walking around living plants and animals, you'll be less preoccupied by your personal problems and feel more connected to people and the world around you. Finnish researchers say being in nature a minimum of five hours a month can make you happier overall. Why not give it a try? 
go outside, go often, bring friends, breathe. So The Nature Fix is written by Florence Williams. It's a great book. It is heavy in science, but she totally promotes females to getting outdoors and not only females, but everybody. Again, she wild is focused on females, but if we really take some steps outside, we'll feel less stressed. We are actually exercising, which is essential for health and it will bring community, which brings happiness and connection, which obviously during quarantine, we were really struggling to find. So bringing people back together in an adventure experience is very important right now. Will it advance the next slide? So it is going to be located in the Lehigh Valley. I have been contacted by Pocono Tourism to launch some of them up there um, because we do have a lot of tourism, not just in the Lehigh Valley, but the Pocono region. The Poconos has high hiking trails like Hickory Run. Um, so this possibly has, like I said, franchising opportunities, not just here, but actually in other areas of Pennsylvania. Our services will be one-to-one -one small group, after-school programming and hands-on workshops. Um, and then we are also looking at doing outdoor experiences that would be half day and full day. And what is really important is that there are other companies doing this, um, especially down south. So I do have some leaders that I've contacted who are helping me with pricing and how to run these sessions. We do have um, expertise. Again, I'm a national hiking guide. I just got approved for that. And we are looking at making sure all of our staff has credentials in the area that they will be um, adventuring. Of course, our passion needs to be outdoors and um, supporting other females. And our drive is to really look at short and long-term goals and overcome obstacles. Currently right now, um, we have the Outdoor Industry Report of 2021. We are seeing an uptick of older participants in the outdoors. So making some of our program not only for the youth, but also for people who are in the 65 and older. And this has actually been done through the past pandemic. So some of our key takeaways on this is interested females, the possibilities that are out there. Um, I do have some other companies that are running adventures, but they're not for females. And we also have just this vast area around us in the Lehigh Valley, Lake Nakamixon, to the Appalachian Trail, um, to some of our Wildlands Conservancy to engage in adventures. Our interest, actually more females are going outside after the pandemic, so we have an interest base. It's now trying to continue the interest past the pandemic. Programming, again, would be offering different courses and our benefits are fitness, mental health, and natural exposure and bringing socialization back to our communities. And our retention is to bring it close to home. We know women are very, very busy. So trying to find adventures that are in the Lehigh Valley for females that can go 20 minutes, almost like a gym workout instead of driving an hour and a half. So making sure that some of them are close, some of them are far, and figuring out how scheduling will work. So again, I said she, because we're females, wild due to Cheryl Strait's novel. Some of our future projects is finding staff in the Lehigh Valley that are adventurers. We do prefer females, but as we learned to start off, we are looking for anyone who's interested in participating. Um, bringing new adventures to the Lehigh Valley and figuring out location, having a storefront that would feature women-based outdoor gear that we can have access to. Again, my name is Allison. I am the founder of She Wild. I'm a mom, a teacher, I'm a nature lover, I'm an adventurer, I'm a certified hiking guide. I'm actually dual certified in the state of Pennsylvania for special education and secondary ed. I am a board member of the NAMI Lehigh Valley. And I'm very passionate to promote this company and empower women to be outdoors. And uh, that is me actually at the Hickory Glen Boulder um, field. If you've ever been there, it's actually pretty wild. Um, pictures say a thousand worlds. When women go out, we might say we're fearful, we're scared, there's spiders. We don't know what's out there. So we're trying to break those barriers of looking and saying, what's the opportunity? 
what is out there for me. Right now, 50% of the United States is not participating in outdoors. That is a large amount of people we can get moving and adventuring. So we definitely have a market. And this is a little high, but um, right now after the pandemic, women are suffering from mental health issues. So we are seeing an uptick in anxiety and depressed moods. And because of that and the connection in nature, this is something that is so right now that we can really make an impact on not only the outdoor experience, but our mental health. So I just wanna say, there's a sneak peek. I do have a website, shewild.com. There is a running Instagram and Facebook. So if you are looking at becoming sort of a follower, we are launching small things. Um, and the website does sort of describe where we're going or what we're looking at doing. I just want to thank everybody for their time and their energy for coming out and spending some time on Zoom with me. Again, this is a startup, but we are very excited and I am getting a lot of feedback from the Lehigh Valley. So I think this is something that you're going to hear not only today, but probably tomorrow. You guys have a great day. Great job, Alison. Can you, uh, Juliet, there we go. I was going to ask you to uh, stop sharing your uh, screen. So while you are thinking about, while you are all thinking about your question, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to start with the first question for you, right? So if I ask you, what are your challenges? What, what are your key challenges, let's say, for the next six months, right? What are some things that you want to accomplish in the next six months? One of the biggest challenges right now is actually applying for insurance. So with SheWild, you need sort of an insurance to make sure that the adventures are safe um, and you have protection. The other thing is getting permits. So I have the National Park Service, which is the Delaware Water Gap, and I have to get approval that I need insurance to get the National Park System to approve. So there's just a few obstacles that I'm dealing with um, to make sure some of the stuff moves forward. Thank you. Any question from the audience? Petra, you want to come down here? And then I'm going to take the next question from our Zoom audience. So if someone has a question, just think about it and you can unmute your mic after uh, Petra gets a chance to ask his question. Thank you, sir. So my question to you is, have you taken a look at um, also existing programming with, say, local docents or local guides where you would piggyback on that or you can go strictly independent that's your program so L.O. bean does offer natural experiences they are held at usually lake nakamixon there is another group called Reset Outdoors that also does outdoor adventuring in the Lehigh Valley. I think my niche is that it's female and community-based. And being a Cedar Crest alum, I truly believe that females have this, I don't know, this girl power. When we get together and we feel that we can overcome things, that we don't always get in a mixed gender environment. Thank you. I'm gonna to go to my uh, Zoom audience. Any, anyone has a question here, just unmute your mic. Chris, yes, please unmute your mic and ask your question. And by the way, thanks for correcting my grammar there, Chris. <laughs> no one says lectern anymore, it's all podium. Doesn't all right. people understand? <laughs> Got it. Um, I don't know. I was typing out my question, Allison. I just, um, I, and you, you mentioned Reset Outdoors and I think that's, uh, similar to you and doing well. Um, I just am skeptical of the way of reaching women. I don't, I, 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 I saw, I understand where you're going, but what's the value proposition and the market research around reaching people or reaching women and convincing them that this is something they want to pay money to do? Um, uh, specifically, you know, this is my passion project really is what's the story that compels me to get out there and do it you know you can tell me stay you can tell me statistics or such but i want to i want to know the, the you know what am i going to get on the other side of this story uh I don't know, it's, it's just a general sort of question i'm i'm, I'm worried about 
you know, reaching people and convincing them that this is what they really need. Right, so um, through Facebook, I've done a lot of documentation of my mental health. So my friends who are very close to me actually know how much I'm a nature seeker. Um, and they've also sort of gone through my story with me. Um, my story is very impactful. Um, so if you have anyone in the mental health field, um, they will probably say this is fact. Um, and Allison's story of being diagnosed with PTSD, I'm worth about $15,000 worth of therapy. Um, and most of my therapists have told me to get out outdoors, go find a community and be fit. And so I'm taking those key information that I have received, not only once, twice, three times, four times, four different therapists, um, and saying, I can build that and sort of make it underneath. So people don't know, but they're doing it because it's fun and that benefit will come through. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jeff Sheck has a next question. While Jeff is, uh, while Jeff is coming uh, to the front here, a good question for our audience uh, in the Zoom. Is this format better where people are coming to the, you know, coming in the front and asking questions? Can you hear that better? Okay, great. Allison, I was, I was curious about how you envision the experience going. You have either one person or you have a group of people that you're taking on a hike. Um, how do you see that half day or full day going? I mean, will you be hiking a certain amount of, for a certain amount of time, then kind of stopping and having like a group talk or presentation or something like that? Like what, what's the mix of what somebody will be experiencing while they're with you for a half a day or a day. So the Blue Ridge Hiking Company, which is out of North Carolina, they are helping me with programming. Um, some people vary. I can go on people with a hike and they just wanna hike in quiet. You can go on a hike with someone and they wanna learn about all the trees and the leaves and what is around them. So I think it depends on individual interest and what, how we personalize that programming. If it's a group outing, obviously it would have more of a theme, but if it's a one-to-one -one or a smaller group that has decided to go out, it might be based on what their interest level is. But who's been hiking? Like, is anyone? Okay, good. So we've, we've gone on the trails, good. And when you're on the trails, right? Do you go out and say like, I just want some quiet? Or do you go out with a friend, right? So depending, or do you go out with somebody because you don't know where you're going? And it's part of the experience of walking the blazes and saying, oh, that next blaze is where I wanna go. So um, those tingly feelings of like, oh my goodness, that's gonna be exciting. Or do I take the blue or the red? But if you have someone guiding you, it might take that away. Well, thank you. Well, it looks like there are, some, there are several hikers here in this room. I'm also a hiker, by the way. I was uh, last week, I was with my family. We went to Shenandoah National Park. Nice. So we did some, a couple of days, uh, you know, really cool hiking, a day long, day long hiking. It was, it was, it was really fun. Um, I'm going to go to my Zoom audience. Any, anyone has any specific question? Do you want to unmute your mic? Girish, please go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, Alison. <clears throat> uh, good presentation. Thank you. Uh, share with the audience, if you may, uh, if there's one element of doubt that has come back to you as you've talked to other people, is there some common theme uh, that <clears throat> that's, looks like a, uh, uh, a roadblock to your uh, efforts here in uh, launching this uh, uh, business? To be honest, the only roadblock is myself. The only roadblock is my own mindset. And so what other people say around me might set up barriers and say, no, I have walked through so much this year that it's, it's limitless. And the potential is there. I just have to access it. 
So that's an easier one to overcome. I mean, if you have to change, I mean, be the change you want to be. So if you have to ch change yourself or accept uh, a different uh, uh, mindset, then uh, you're, you're almost uh, guaranteed of uh, a certain level of success. So good luck. Uh, can I can I ask a follow-up question? I, I think I'm speaking louder so they can hear me. So you mentioned your personal roadblocks, right? Mm -hmm. What are those? Can you share with us? I mean, because you are becoming you are you're an entrepreneur and you're going down that journey. So what are, can you, if you want to, you know, what are one or two things that are something that you want to overcome? Sure. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Um, thank you. <laughs> um, I think society sometimes, you know, I think when we stand in front of a group and propose a dream, you know, society is the one that might say no. And we're the one that have to say, hell yeah. Right. And to be able to continue to walk through all of the no's. So I think my own mindset and my struggle with anxiety and maybe not feeling enough in the world is like, I'm here and I'm enough. So if I hold that mindset, I didn't even think I'd be here right now. So I'm enough to make this happen. Great. Allison, we also, you know, we also teach a class here uh, an NCC called the Entrepreneurial Mindset. And just for your FYI, you know, the reason I ask you that question is, uh, and I, I also teach that class. I've taught that class, uh, you know, for the past semester. And the, the class is nothing about starting a business. It's all about, you know, overcoming our personal difficulties, you know, because sometimes that is, you know, a huge barrier to us, you know, in moving forward. And a lot of, you know, a lot of my students, uh, we also discuss those things in the classroom because we, you know, we talk it from a perspective of an idea, but especially what is holding us back, you know, to move forward in some of those ideas. So thank you for sharing that, you know, with us. Uh, yes, Jeff, and I'm going to come to you, Lauren, after that. Is that okay? Jeff, Jeff, please. So this is Jeff French. Jeff Sheck was before. This is Jeff French. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's mixed up. Allison. Uh, I loved your presentation and uh, I can't agree more that being outside is just a fantastic uh, stress reliever. Um, I can't put my finger on it as a conservationist and a mountain biker. Uh, I'm out there all the time and it just does something to calm the soul. But something I wanted to share with you and I see all the time are uh, female mountain bikers. Um, there's a there's a huge group out there that does that kind of thing. There's a uh, woman-owned uh, bike shop just down the street, Cutter's Bike Shop. I could introduce you to people there if there's any interest. Um, trail running is very popular with uh, men and women, but I see women out there with pace on these trails that I don't know how they do it, but it's uh, pretty incredible. Um, and from an insurance standpoint, I manage the insurance for Valley Mountain Bikers. And we use uh, the Hillside Group in uh, Colorado. So if you wanted contact information for claims, I can certainly provide that for you as well. Just awesome. some other things to uh, consider. Thank you so much. Lauren, would you like to come up to the front? And then after Lauren, I'm going to come to uh, our Zoom audience. Even shorter. <laughs> um, I uh, I just wanted to say, Allison, that uh, I do appreciate this uh, this presentation, and it is exciting actually getting out and getting all that oxygen and everything. But as a 67 year old introvert, <laughs> I mean, I take walks around the neighborhood regularly. Um, what's the worst case scenario that you anticipate that your insurance is going to want to cover? <laughs> Um, well, hike doesn't matter. Um, recently I hiked with a six foot five guy. So I am only five foot. And so he towered <laughs> me. Um, that was quite unique. Um, insurance wise, I 
think that's a discussion that I would have to have with the insurance company. I know there is a certain base that I have to have coverage of insurance. I did go through wilderness first aid um, recently, so I am wilderness trained. And in my pack, I make sure that I have everything that is possibly necessary for an injury. And then I have the contact information for our local emergency supports just in case. And I would also say at different ages, there are ways that we can modify hikes and make sure that we're not trailblazing possibly things that might be risk. Um, I was actually having coffee with a friend and she struggles with weight. And so her concern is how do I travel the trails carrying some extra weight with her? And I said, well, we just have to make accommodations or make sure we start moving a little more before we maybe tackle big oven knobs you know, rocky terrain. So, but there are hikes in the Lehigh Valley that are more gentle and not as, I don't want to say advanced, but as treacherous. So I think we can modify depending on ability and interest level. Thank you. So to my, to my Zoom audience here, anyone has any specific question for uh, an Alice or feedback, you can just unmute your mic and then Give us that feedback or question. Any any takers here? All right. So I've got I've got a question for you. So let's say if I am interested um, to render your service, right? So you, you know, I want to you know get your service, um, and I'm interested. So what are? Can you explain to me how much it's going to cost me? So can you give me some idea on what are some ranges price wise that someone that is looking to work with you? So through some basic research, um, what we are looking at is about $190 for three hours. Um, that would be a group of three. So you could do one to three. And depending on who is maybe with your group, we can add sort of additional cost. And obviously, if it's an hour community program, it might be 15 to 20, almost like a fitness program that you would find in the Lehigh Valley. Um, we are trying to figure out market value in the Lehigh Valley compared to other areas that offer services like this. Um, but I think knowing what other people are offering and knowing that they are successful in their business plan, I'm sort of gauging and seeing what we have. So a half day would be 190, if that's your question. Okay, so half day about 190. All right. Any 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 other questions? Yes. Just a little bit of follow up. Yeah. Does that include transportation to location or, or do we need to at that site? They would meet at the site. Transportation. Can I can I repeat the question? Yeah. So the question was, does the cost include transportation? Right. You know, well, to the look right to the yeah to the location where the hike starts from. Um, currently, we are not going to provide transportation. There are hiking companies that do do that. They actually offer overnight lodging. So if you were staying in an Airbnb, you would possibly get Ubered or transported to the location, stay overnight and do a weekend. Um, there's a lot of options, but it also causes sort of insurance issues with driving people in your car. So I think right now it's getting out and putting events out there like workshops, how to make a filtration system out of a water bottle. What should you carry in your pack? Let's talk about the 10 essentials. Getting very basic knowledge into the Lehigh Valley and then moving forward. Yeah. Next question is from Gary Shaw. Gary, please come to the front. Good morning. I, I actually have a, a couple of questions. Uh, the first question is, how do you, you know, uh, I, in my family, there are a lot of women who have anxiety issues in terms of trying something new or just getting out in a group environment. So how do you plan to convince people or promote this type of activity uh, and overcome those things? Uh, the second thing, which is actually more of a statement is, um, would you consider going to some of the larger employers in the area 
and maybe offering it as a retreat type of event for, you know, for their uh, female employees. Uh, and the last question is, um, are you considering, is it strictly just getting out in nature and learning about like the essentials for hiking, or are you planning to integrate other things like, uh, you know, how to address, you know, how to deal with stress issues or how to deal with other issues, you know, how to, you know, maybe associating with how to do networking events or how to, um, you know, you know, different types of opportunities besides just the, the hiking itself. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, since we labeled She Wild, it gives us opportunity to hold a whole bunch of different adventures. I have a friend who's a kayaker. She's very interested in being leading like kayaking. So I think one of your first questions was how do I get people to feel confident of going into the wilderness? Yes. Um, I will tell you, I was never a Girl Scout or anything like that before I started going into the woods myself. So sharing that this has not been something that has been natural to me sometimes eases people into the story. I also have a silly story that I decided to set up a tent in the wilderness and forgot my tent poles. And I have this amazing picture of erecting a tent using sticks as poles. So I say I'm the imperfect camper <laughs> because if I can say that I'm imperfect doing this, then others can feel comfortable being imperfect and being out in the woods themselves. Of course, I bring my tent poles now and I have a backup set. But um, sharing that this is something that we grow through and you don't have to be this expert as I was not, um, I think that reduces some people's anxiety. And also doing shorter trips. So maybe three hours would be too intense, but maybe just doing a 45 minute and getting comfortable in different locations. Um, I think you also mentioned- Incorporating other activities. Activities. Right, so I was saying with the wild part, we have this huge umbrella that we can do. Someone mentioned mountain biking, um, uh, paddle boarding, pretty much adventure has this envelope. I'm a marathon runner, so we could say she wild runs. Um, so whatever you want to loop that underneath. And we can also do networking saying both companies are working together to make this. So she wild could partner with somebody. Your third question. It's about feeling, you know, going out to bigger employers. Bigger employers. So Gersh challenged me to do contacts. So I reached out to Lehigh Valley Hospital in St. Luke's. Um, they have mental health fields. Um, sadly, I was at the Horsham Clinic um, and was released. It was a complication. But um, I realized that even in a in-person mental health facility, they restricted me from going outdoors. They wouldn't even let me go outside of the facility. I'm, I'm thinking more along the lines of like, like hair products or right. or- So, or right, and you were talking about more like company issues. So She Wild can do more mental health and work with Kids Peace and getting the kids on the trucks that are game preserve and walking. We can also launch into business um, conversations. The island that contacted me, which is a private island, offered me weekend retreats um, for something like that. So it's really working almost like as a teacher, it's working on unit plans and lesson plans. <laughs> This is how I break down my business because that's what I'm trained in, is developing curriculum. And so what is my unit plan? What are the lessons that are going to come underneath it and how I'm going to support it? And as such a young startup, it's figuring out what's the best way to go right now. And where do people see the need? And what is the easiest for me? Without insurance right now, it's really difficult to take people out on the trails. So hosting workshops do not have to do insurance. So I can do education and do motivational speaking and engage women that way, but I don't need insurance for that. 
So that's where I'm sort of like in this back and forth. Alison, thank you. Any any question from our Zoom audience or comments? Uh, for our uh, for our audience that are participating from Zoom, uh, I see that you have put several comments on the chat. So we are recording this session, and we'll make sure that you get a copy of the recording. So uh, you will have their contact information and any uh, you know other um, feedback that they may have regarding your idea. Any question from the audience? So Alison, this is the last question that we always ask in the One Million Club, and. Yeah, the last question is, how can we as a community help you? you know, how can we as a community help you grow your business or in any of the things uh, that you are needing right now? Can you share that with us? So um, Jeff already threw out some great contacts. So I appreciate. Um, so gathering more contacts and hearing back, getting the feedback of what you are seeing and hearing the obstacles. I really like how you're talking about working with other businesses, possibly Olympus, and doing sort of women leadership programming through nature exploration. So hearing feedback from the Lehigh Valley, what is the niche, even though it might be a niche that I'm seeing, what are you seeing? Because we are really here to fulfill like the females here, but like, how do we create something that's beneficial for our community? Thank you, thank you for uh, thank you for sharing that with us. So we move to our announcement part now. Any announcement? Anybody would like to make an announcement? Anyone in anybody in the Zoom that would like to make any announcement? Okay, I don't see any hands going up. What about in the audience? No, okay. Uh, just a quick announcement that I have. Uh, we are, we'll be introducing some new workshops uh, for the fall semester uh, through the college year. A lot of those workshops are you know, at very low cost or in some cases even free. Uh, we'll keep you posted uh, with those workshops, those workshops starting you know, with dealing with small businesses um, and anything else also related to that. So keep your, keep your eyes out for that and we'll be circulating a, a, an email uh, regarding those workshops. Uh, again, the session is recorded, so we'll make sure that uh, all of you get a copy of the Zoom recording uh, after the session is over. We are learning, uh, you know, moving forward, we see One Million Cup Lea Valley more in a hybrid fashion where we have audience such as you in person, and then we have our uh, online audience. I think that's, that's, that's the way it's going to be, and we'll get the technology better as we, as we, as we move forward here, because we want to make sure that we create that robust experience moving forward. Alison, as, so since you are a One Million Cup alum now, you know, we always give a, uh, our, all of our presenter a coffee mug that you get. So this is a, hopefully you, you know, th this can come handy for coffee or any other. it'll ever be empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or any other beverage that you may, uh, you may want to have. Another thing, do, do we have any presenters here that presented virtually for the last 15 months that have not gotten a coffee. Lorraine hasn't gotten one. So I'll make sure you get one today. Uh, anybody else? Okay, great. So that concludes our session for this morning. For those of you that are participating through Zoom, we will see you guys uh, next week, either virtually or in person here. Uh, we are also trying to make that Zoom experience more robust. So there might be some things that we'll be sending out here in the next week or so um, on, on, how we, uh, on how we are going to improve that experience as well, uh, along with our uh, in-person um, participants here. There's plenty of coffee guys. So if you're a coffee drinker, make sure that you take coffee. Uh, don't let it go to waste. Yes, Gary. Uh, will music fest have an impact on the meeting next week? Uh, Gary's question was, will music fest have an impact on the meeting uh, next week? And the answer is no. So working. just, well, I mean, it's early enough. So, you know, it's eight, nine o'clock. So I'm, I'm hoping that parking won't be an issue, but we will, we will have our regular schedule on the income next week. No problem, that, that's not an issue. All right, great. Have a wonderful day.